Hi, this is Tony, and we're back on the bench. And this evening, we're going to be doing uh, some work on another conventional reel here. So, in this box, in this beautiful pen reels box, we've got a Pen Senator 2 solid forward spool uh, conventional reel. So, this is the 113 HLW. It's a 4 0 size, but it's a wide size. So the, the H stands for high speed. The L, I do believe, is for the aluminum spool, and the W is for the wide. So let's have a look here and see what this reel is all about. I believe this reel is relatively rare these days, this, this two series model. So we've got some, uh, this, this reel is, is virtually, I would say brand new. I don't think this reel's actually ever been fished before. We've got a book in here. So that kind of dates the reel, so to speak. There's probably a year on here somewhere. Yeah. 1980. Right. So that, uh, that gives us a little bit of a, of a inside a scoop on, uh, the, the, the generation of this reel here. So you can just see right here, you know, all the reels uh, that they were offering at that time. So that's nice. And then, you know, we've got, you know, some clamp parts and there's still a tube of, of old school pen lube in here. Great, great stuff. So, and then there's also a wrench down in there, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably have to do a little bit of homework on this one because I believe that this particular series, the Senator 2 series, is quite rare. But yeah, we've got a wide frame, lightweight with this aluminum spool in opposed to an all-metal spool like all the old Senators would typically have. It's got the beautiful etched side plate here, and it says 4.0 Special, ball bearing reel, this model. And definitely high capacity here. Uh, it says right here, 30-pound test at uh, 600 yards so that's a lot of line for sure but we're, we're going to be doing a service on this reel and you know uh, we'll uh, we'll see what it's about and so if you're if you're the owner of this same reel and you want to work on it then that's what this video is about so that you can do it yourself and you know if you're in the market for it if you happen to see one somewhere and you think that you want to pick it up then you'll have a clue as to how to service it and also have an idea about uh, replacement parts now that's one thing this is not a standard 4.0 senator and it's not a a, a standard 4.0 high speed it's the wide frame so that does change a few things mainly with the frame posts and the spool itself and then these these frame bars here as well you know, as far as the gearing and the innards are concerned, it should be all the same as just a regular uh, 4.0 special. And this is uh, this handle nut is on there quite tight, so we're going to see if we can't get this off. Yeah, not yet. Okay, so this is a good good lesson right here. So what you do in these situations, what's wise to do is to spray a little bit of penetrating fluid on that and let that soak in for a little bit. I'm going to walk away and let that sit for a little while and then pause the video. We'll come back in a little bit and we're going to see if that doesn't help free that up a little bit. Okay, so we're back and it's been about 10 minutes and we let that penetrating fluid soak in there a little bit and we're going to just see how it is now to take off yeah there we go i would say just judging from the shape of this reel i don't think it's ever been fished and i don't think it's ever been serviced for that matter and that's probably why this was a little difficult to take off you know there's no rust or pitting damage or anything like that but things you know when they sit for a long time and you know they just, uh, they, they have kind of a memory of their own, so to speak. So this is a convertible handle, as Penn would call it. So you've got two different positions here that you can mount this in to get better leverage when you're reeling in, you know, big game fish, basically. This is definitely uh, what we would call a, a trolling reel, but this wide uh, frame body actually does give it a little bit of advantage in in casting so to speak 
uh, I'd say this is a very large casting reel, but you know, if you were working the surf or something like that and you had to cast out a big rig of some kind for, you know, shark or something to that effect, you know, you, you, you would probably consider a reel like this, you know, cause it is lightweight and it's got this wide spool. So that makes it good for casting, but essentially it would, it would just be a trolling reel in most situations, I would say. Okay. But yeah, all these pieces and parts, you know, they're clean, you know, so, you know, we're not going to have to spend a lot of time cleaning, which is a really good thing. Okay. So we've got a, uh, a, a spring washer right here. Now this is cool, uh, be, and this indicates uh, that this is a a reel that you can get access to the drag from the outside. And this was common on a lot of the older senators, and they they took it away at a certain point. But as you can see, they still did it uh, in 1980 when this reel was was made. And, uh, and this was handy because then if you fried up your drag stack out on the water on a boat, uh, you know, you could bring another set of drag stacks with you and, you know, you could change it out right there, you know. So that's, that's pretty nice to have. So we're going to take our drag stack out here bit by bit and we're going to have a look at it. So this has the old school disc brake style drag washers, very thick. <laughs> look at how thick that is. And these are, you know, we I call these, uh, you know, they're made from disc brake material, basically. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. If you had to replace this stack with a modern day stack, it, it would have to be the carbon fiber equivalent. But that's that's not what we're going to have to do here, I don't think, because these these washers are unfished. I mean, this this reel has not been fished, judging from the state of this. So, you know, these washers are all coming out relatively easily. That one might need a little bit of persuasion. It's almost out. But yeah, these are just in great, great, immaculate shape. Okay, so we've got our drag stack out. Now, really, all we have to do is start taking some screws apart here on this side. In this video, you know, we're only really concerned with doing the service if this reel was more beat up and it had more rust and pitting damage, I would probably go to the extents of taking apart this side plate section, but we're really only going to just do this section and then, you know, pull the spool out and look at all the innards and everything and make sure that we service everything that should be serviced. But when the reel is clean like this, it makes things easy. That's all I can say, or easier. And so it, it really does go a long way to, to do the maintenance on your reel. And like I said, you know, if you're in the market for this reel or if you own this reel already, this video is to teach you and show you how you can service it yourself with some basic tools, a little bit of time, some basic products uh, for lubricating and whatnot. Yeah, this is a, a, a gorgeous, gorgeous specimen of a reel. Okay. We got one more screw hiding behind here. Got to take that out. Okay, so we've got our innards there on the handle side, and then we've got our red aluminum spool, unique to this model reel, no doubt. I seriously doubt you'd be able to find this replacement spool for this reel these days without finding the same reel, probably. Okay, well, everything's really clean, so 
We're just going to kind of gently go over this with a paper towel and just clean up anything that can be cleaned, essentially. I'm just going to take a little liquid wrench here to this ball bearing and let that work its way in just a little bit while we're working and sitting here. I'll take a little 4 steel wool here to the, the base here, the stand. There really is no corrosion on this reel whatsoever. There's just a little bit of fogging, as I would call it, on the reel just from sitting for so long, sitting on somebody's shelf. I did actually find this reel on eBay, and it it, it was a reasonably decent price, I thought, at the time for, for what it was. And given how rare this particular model is or can be. Now, like I said, if you're dealing with a reel like this and it's got more rust, you know, signs of rust damage and pitting and corrosion and stuff like that, then I would go to the extents to taking apart this whole side plate, but you really don't need to do that. The only thing that you can do is you can just, uh, you know, free up the, the ball bearing here a little bit and just make sure that the threads are intact okay this actually does not want to free up that easily so this is another reason why you do maintenance notice that i'm putting this paper towel on top of it because i don't want to mar it up i just want to gently turn it with those pliers just to free it up a little bit if i can it really doesn't seem to want to do that Okay, so we got that loosened up now. It actually was on there pretty tight. Yeah, I would just go to the extent of taking this out and just kind of doing a quick inspection with this. We sprayed that penetrating oil in there. Let that work its way in. You want to get all the old grease, of course, out of there. And I find it's helpful to take a brass wire brush to these threads here sometimes just to clean out those threads. Okay. Give another shot of penetrating oil here. Let that sink in there. So while we're here, we're going to take a little bit of real oil and we're going to apply that to these holes here that are threaded holes like so and prep those threads for putting the screws back in all right got that penetrating oil sinking in there pretty good and we'll put this back it actually doesn't hurt just to do a little bead of that oil across here on these threads as well. I, I have no idea of the history of this reel, but my guess is, is it sat and it sat some more on somebody's shelf and eventually it, uh, it ended up somewhere else. Okay. All right, so do a little bit of real oil on this bearing here, ball bearing, flood that. We're going to take some Pem Precision Blue Grease here to our clicker tongue. Just a little bit of that there. Okay. So now we'll focus on the handle side here. So in order to get this all apart, as usual, we've got four screws in these positions here. But what's very helpful here is to take this inner ring off first. So just gently pry that out like so. You're going to lose this piece here in the mix, but it'll go back easily like so. 
That's for when you go to attach your, your uh, harness, your chair harness on the boats, if you have one. Okay, and then we're going to get these, these four screws out here. So we've got two partially threaded screws on the top. two fully threaded screws on the bottom. Now I like to cup this with my hand here because you don't want these pieces and parts to go flying out on you. There is a dog spring that's ready to fly out on you in there so you want to just be careful and use caution when you do this. Okay. Yeah, Nice big big gear set right there. Okay, but we got a dog, dog spring. I like to keep these these trays nearby to house all these pieces and parts in, of course. Very handy. Gear is very clean. No signs of damage or rust or anything really on, on the bridge whatsoever. So it's like I said, when it's clean, it makes it easy. And then all the rest is our, our pinion yoke and eccentric lever jack and all these pieces and parts here basically and we'll just take all these out like so We've got two yoke springs in here that need to come out as well For some reason, this eccentric jack is quite challenging to come out. I can just tell by looking at all these pieces and parts, this reel has not been used or fished at all. Okay, it took a little while to get that eccentric jack off. It's, uh, it's just so new that it's not ready to come out, but finally got it with a little bit of persuasion. Okay, so now we're just basically ready to clean up our inside of the plate here and then we've also got our bridge here and we've got this pin to punch out which you can traditionally do relatively easily with a nail punch such as this and sometimes you have to tap it with a hammer sometimes you can just kind of punch down on it with your hand i think in this case i'm going to have to tap it with the hammer we'll see if we can do that yeah I think that's what's going to have to happen. So off camera, I'm just going to be putting this in a vise here. And gently clamp down on that. And then just taking a ball peen hammer to that, that pin and gently tap on it. Being that the reel is so new, you know, these things can can be a little challenging to take out, but at this point you should be able to just take a pair of needle nose to it and gently roll it back and forth a little. Now this one this one's definitely not wanting to come out easily though, that's for sure. There we go. Okay. And you don't want to lose that, so make sure you put that in your in your parts bin. Alright, sleeves off. Now we've got access to our, our drive shaft on the bridge. So we're just going to take a paper towel here and we're going to get all this old lube off here, basically. Clean this up the best we can. We'll take some of this liquid wrench, 
penetrating oil to all these pieces and parts here. So, you know, we're, we're spending time on the cleaning here, mainly just getting the old grease off, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. And then we'll, we'll do the same thing here. We'll just flood a little bit of penetrating lube in here, and, you know, we'll take a, a just a regular toothbrush, all these pieces and parts in here. Grease has a tendency to build up down in this housing here of the main gear, so you want to make sure that you free up all that old grease. Get that out of there. Okay. Yeah, just a little bit of work with some penetrating oil and some paper towels and just some basic household products, Q-tips and things of that sort goes a long way. Toothbrushes, brass wire brushes, things like that. Very basic tools. Okay, so that's good to go there. Okay. And what we'll do is we've got this ball bearing here. Uh, this actually gets punched out. This doesn't screw in or anything like that, but we're, we don't need to worry about that since it's in such great shape. There's no need to remove it and try to replace it. So we're just gonna flood this with some real oil here. You can use any real oil you want. Just make sure it's for reals, okay? That's the important part, okay? So now we'll do some 4 steel wool on this shaft here, like so. Clean that up really well. All right, we've been letting all these pieces and parts kind of soak in here. We'll do a little bit of blue grease on our eccentric roller right here while we're in this vicinity. Okay. And then we've got our pin for the bridge. Beautiful, beautiful brass piece. And we'll just take a Q-tip to the inside of that, get any old residual grease out of there. Okay. And then what I like to do here, you can use oil. I like to use grease usually because it's thicker and it has less tendency to get into your drag stack compared to oil. So I would just do that. Okay, and then just leaves ready to go back on, like so. And we've got our pin. And then we'll give that a little tap. You want to use caution when you're doing this because you don't want to mung up those threads, but you need to make sure that the pin is all the way in. And in this case, it's still sticking out just a little bit. So sometimes you got to take that punch back to it and you got to hit it just a little bit more. I'm actually going to put this back on the vise again. Okay, so that should be good there. All right, so now it's just about cleaning up these, these pieces and parts here, basically. Okay. Remember that you've got a, a spacer washer, hard spacer washer that goes here first. Okay, and then we've got our main gear. And again, this is the high-speed version high speed wide version in this case, but this is one of the high speed gear sets. And so that's what that looks like in opposed to the standard senators, which is a lower gear speed, which is less teeth in the gear. And I recently did a video on a, a 3.0 special senator. And, you know, I mentioned that, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to both. You know, if you're doing, you know, the kind of fishing where you want that high speed retrieve, uh, you know, special senators are definitely the way to go. But if you're doing other kinds of fishing where, 
the high speed retrieve isn't necessarily needed, but you just really want that torque, you know, that solid torque, then a, a standard senator is actually a, a, probably a better way to go in a lot of ways. So there's our gear set, beautiful. No problems there at all. Okay. I'm just gonna make sure that this goes back on like so. All right, now at this point you could in fact reinstall the drag set, but in this case we don't have to because we can get access to it from out here. So we're gonna wait to do that because it's better that way. But what we will do here is we're gonna put our blue grease on on our teeth right now and get that ready to go. And you don't need to get every single tooth necessarily, but you want there to be enough grease to, to work its way into those teeth. Okay. It should be something like that. Okay. And then we've got all of these other pieces and parts left over here. We've got our eccentric jack. We've got our yoke, pinion yoke. Very clean pieces, so that makes things easy. Okay, we're going to take that brass wire brush to this pinion gear. Okay. Couple of springs here, so we'll get those springs back in position like so. Okay, I'll make sure you don't lose that dog spring as well. Tiny, tiny little dog spring. All right, so we'll do some blue grease on the yoke like so. And then we're also going to get it on our our gear as well right now. Okay, we'll get that set up right now. We've also got our eccentric jack, okay. And sometimes this is a little hard and tricky to do. Sometimes it's not. Given how difficult it was to get this jack off on this particular reel, it could be a little challenging, but we'll see. There we go. Got to snap in finally. Okay. So that's that part of the assembly. Now you're ready to put your bridge assembly and the main gear back in. Okay. So what I like to do here typically is I'll just slide this back in gently and I'll start to roll the bridge and press down on top of the pinion gear like this because you need this hole to stay exposed for your dog and your dog spring, okay? And it's got to be nice and flush and flat here, okay? So you just got to be mindful of that, okay? And then at this point, what you do is you want to take your fully threaded screw from underneath, and you want to feed that back into position here so that that dog doesn't move on you, and then put your spring back in. I'll try to do this as closely as I can on camera so you can see this here, all right? But you just got to push that in gently, okay? And make sure it don't go flying away on you because you'll be spending a lot of time looking for it if it does. All right, and then roll the bridge back around. Keep pressure on that screw, okay, so it doesn't fall out, and then slowly start turning it back in. Okay. At this point, I usually like to do a little turn here and make sure that that dog is functioning correctly before I put the other screws back in. So we've got the other fully threaded screw and then two partially threaded screws. And we'll get those in right now. So 
Sometimes you have to persuade the bridge around a little bit to get some of these to start. I think we got it now. Don't over tighten them, okay? You don't want to do that. Just give them a little snug. Snug tug, as I call it. Just get a little, you know, once you start to feel it tighten up and then just kind of give it a quarter turn and then call it a day. Don't, don't keep torquing down on it because you'll crack the plate. All right, I just like to kind of go back and check it. Okay. Well, that's in good shape there. Now we're ready to put our ring back on. Got to get these holes lined up just right. Get our, our harness lug here back in place. Okay. So it should look like that. In good shape. So now we're going to take our spool and we're going to take that 4 steel wool here to the shaft on this real quickly. Clean that up really well. And then we're going to go with that that pen precision blue grease that we have here to this shaft. And we'll go back in like so. Also make note that not all these screws are the same. There's three shorter ones that go down at the base here. Okay, so you want to make sure that those shorter ones are, are in, the, in the stand. Just kind of get one of them started and then you should be able to get the rest of them started pretty easily once everything kind of gets lined up okay also make sure that you lubricate these threads here with some real oil or some uh, penetrating lube of some kind these are going to go into all of our frame posts here, like so. And don't forget you got one hiding behind the eccentric lever there. And then I like to go back and forth, up and down, east, west, north, south, however you want to go about it. But I like to distribute that across the entire reel going back and forth. It makes for better balance usually that way and it lines things up better because there is such a thing as frame post bending and that can happen when you don't distribute that tension across the, the whole frame of the reel. Once I start to feel it snug up, I stop, and then I just kind of go back and turn another one until it gets to that point. I'll just do it for all of them. And 
Okay. So just do some turns here. Okay, so we'll go once more around top and bottom. This one gets a little bit more down here. Okay, so it looks like it's in good shape. So now we're ready to go back with our our drag stack. There's no need to grease up uh, these brake style pads. Uh, they're just designed to go in just as they are. Okay, but if you see signs of disintegration or if they just really look worn out, uh, you know, if they don't have a roughness to them of any kind, you know, and, and they just seem like they're just, uh, you know, completely burnt out, then yeah, you need to replace uh, replace those washers uh, more than likely with the carbon fiber equivalent. So we just go back in sequence. Yeah, great, great, powerful drag stack there. So that's good. Okay. And we'll put our, put our handle back on here. Before we do that, we need our, our star wheel. You want to make sure that this is down all the way. So that you can get that handle on completely and not partially. Okay, and then we'll tighten up that handle nut. You got to get this lined up just right to, in order to get your your set screw back in position. And I like to just do a bead of oil on that because I have snapped these screw heads off before because they were fused in there basically. Okay, so let's give it a try and see how it does. Not that there was a problem to begin with, but... In great shape there. Try our clicker out. Nice strong clicker. Make sure our free spool is working really smoothly. Might have to make some adjustments here with the bearing. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Okay. And we'll try our, our drag out and just make sure that those those discs are grabbing. Yeah, and they're they're definitely grabbing, so. So there we have it. That is the Penn Senator 40 Special, Senator 2 40 Senator Special, a wide edition, all serviced up and ready to go. So thanks again for watching. This is Tony with Back on the Bench. If you liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button. That way you will be getting all the updates as to when there are new videos being posted. And we'll see you next time.